Hi everybody, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small and today we're going to be looking at Fortress Europe. Uh, this is a Late War Forces book for version 4 of Flames of War. So um, I know this review is a, a little late, this has been out for a little while, but uh, my game store was out of these copies for a while, they just got a restock so I managed to snag one. So Fortress Europe, um, this is kind of the first of the official uh, late war releases. There were, was an interim um, product that did have um, kind of version 3 points associated with them, but this is using what you're already familiar with in uh, mid-war, which is that kind of 100 point scale, kind of the X-wing scale if you will. Uh, and Fortress Europe is the first late war product that introduces that as well. So who is Fortress Europe for? Um, and it's, it's a good question. I know the late war period in Flames of War is very uh, contentious among some of the fans. Um, there's a lot of people that just love version 3 and I'm one of them. And um, we, you know, people have invested a lot of money in, in books uh, for version 3, version 2. So what does this bring to the table? Why, if um, you know, you're an existing player, would you want this? Um, you know, it's more obvious if you're a new player. Now, what's kind of cool about this, and, and we'll crack it open in a minute, is inside they do have, um, they do actually have a page talking about why you'd want Fortress Europe. Uh, so it's kind of cool, and, and they are targeting different uh, groups of players. One would be the, the person who's played Flames of War version 4 only, and they maybe have some mid-war armies. Um, this book is a good transition from mid-war to late war. Um, a lot of these lists will let you use some of your mid-war models um, that will eventually be phased out as the late war gets later, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but it, it lets you do that. And that's a, a important um, point to this book is it's a transition for players who are currently in mid-war to get them introduced to late war so they can still use some of their stuff. Not, not all of their stuff, but some of their stuff. All right, um, let's go ahead and look at the table of contents. Now we're not gonna do a page turn of this book. I, I know Battlefront doesn't like that, so we're just gonna show you uh, uh, some of the stuff in this book. But I should also mention that this book runs um, $25 retail US. Uh, you might be able to find it a little bit cheaper online, but that's, uh, that's what I paid for it. All right, so the contents of this book. We have four different uh, forces or factions in here. We have the Americans, the Germans, the British, and the Soviets. So you have all the uh, the main heavy hitters. Um, this does have several um, basically companies or um, battalions for the Russians for every faction. Now they're pretty plain or vanilla because this is obviously an, an interim product again. It's, it's meant to carry you from mid-war to late war or maybe this is where you're starting. It's giving you a lot of lists for a lot of different nations and as a result, and I don't think you'd expect more, these are, are you know, kind of vanilla. So, for the Americans, you got your Germans, your British, your Soviets. This really doesn't have too much uh, fluff in it. It's got, um, it's really just about the list. They try to get as many lists as they can in this box. So let's talk about the Americans first. So for the Americans, you get uh, an M4 Sherman Company, an M5 Stewart Company, uh, M10 Tank Destroyer Company, Armored Rifle Company, Rifle Company, and then Support Units. So that is one, two, three, four, five different companies you can, uh, you can build or formations. With the uh, Germans, you get uh, Tiger Company, Panther Company, a Panzer three and four mixed tank company and that's another example of trying to let uh, mid-war players play with uh, some of their mid-war stuff. Panzer 3's aren't quite completely phased out yet so you can mix them Panzer 3 and 4. Then you have a uh, Stug Assault Gun Company, uh, Panzer Grenadier, uh, Grenadier and then uh, support units. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six companies or formations for the Germans. For the British um, they have Sherman, Ar Sherman Armored Company, uh, Churchill Armored Squadron, Rifle Company, and Motor Company. So they only get four. Um, then we have the Soviets. We've got a KV-1S, Guards Heavy Tank Regiment, 
Churchill Guards Heavy Tank Regiment T-34 Hero Tank Battalion Hero Motor Rifle Battalion Hero Rifle Battalion T-34 Tank Battalion M3 Lee Tank Battalion Motor Rifle Battalion Rifle Battalion and Reconnaissance Company so they have the most um, and they're not companies here for the most part they're battalions just because of the force organization chart for the um, Soviets, but they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten different uh, uh, formations there, which is kind of cool. Okay, so this is the M4 Sherman Tank Company tank formation. We see the formation over here. You're required to take an HQ, one platoon of Shermans, and either one platoon of Shermans or Stewarts. Then you have some optional um, units as well in that formation. Um, these are just M4. Uh, 1A's though in this book there are no upgrades for your Shermans there are no 76 millimeter Shermans there are no of the late late war jumbos or easy eights or anything like that M4 A3's these are just uh, plain Jane vanilla Shermans and they're the ones that um, if you built Shermans in your mid-war army these are the same tanks so again you see some of that uh, forward thinking where if you're an American player with a mid-war Sherman army you can very easily roll that into a late war um, Sherman company as well and then add on from there but you'll see that again it's very um, very plain there's not there's not any other option except uh, the base Sherman here's another example example this is that Panzer 3 and 4 mixed uh, tank company and we can see the formation diagram over here uh, you know they have an HQ two required uh, tank platoons and two additional optional tank platoons. Um, you'll notice, and this is something that's common with almost all of these formations except Americans, is they don't have a lot of support um, units in the actual formation itself. Like that American tank company had 81 millimeter mortars and uh, other things. Th this is just tanks, which is in some ways a little bit dangerous, but we're, I guess I'm sorry, I'm spinning off into tactics here. It's not a fault of the book, it's just how this formation is designed. But this is cool because you can um, take Panzer IVs or threes and kind of any number you want. Um, the HQ could be all threes, all fours, or one of each. The platoon can be up to five Panzer IVs and you can swap any of those. Um, oh no, sorry, for the Panzer IV mixed platoon, you only get to swap out one of the Panzer IVs to Panzer III. And then there's a Panzer III mixed platoon, which lets you swap out up to two Panzer III's with Panzer IVs. So however you want to swap them out, you can probably, um, uh, one of those two formations will do it. So if you want to have a mix, which is, is kind of cool. That's a great way to save a few points here and there, or if you, um, you know, you're, you're building a 100 point list and you're, you're at 101, uh, you drop one of your Panzer IVs to a Panzer III and, and you're good. So it's always good to have these um, minor or small point upgrades or downgrades so that you can better uh, tailor your force. One thing I thought I'd point out that I really like about this book is this Know Your Tanks page. I know they've done it before in other products, but I always really like it. You know, I have played Flames of War, and I, I like uh, uh, military history, so I, I know a lot of this, but a lot of gamers might not, so it has a description of each tank. This is the British, uh, you know, Know Your Tanks page, and it uh, goes into a little description on each one with a nice pretty picture to help you with painting if you want, um, which is kind of cool. So I do appreciate that in the uh, rule book, and uh, it's really well presented. So there's one of these for each of the four nations. Next, I thought I'd show you an example of a uh, Soviet force. This is a, a force, and then you, you plug in your formations. You know, if you want to take a hero T-34 battalion, and then these are all your support units. This is how a Flames of War version 4 is played, and I really like this layout um, in some ways almost better than version 3. Um, you know you might as a Soviet player take a Hero T-34 tank battalion and a uh, you know maybe a motor, motor rifle battalion and then add some support units to taste. Um, so it's really cool how they laid out and you can see the Soviets are really the uh, 
they're not the winners in the book, but they have a lot of content. They've got, um, like I said, 10 formations here. Now, most of those are kind of repeats, you know, the Churchill Heavy Tank Company and the KV-1S Heavy Tank, sorry, they're regiments, not companies, are basically the same with just a different swap out of tanks, but it gives you a lot of different tanks to play with. Like the Americans, they only get the Sherman and the Stuart and the M10. Uh, these guys have, you know, Lend-Lease uh, M3 Lees still from mid-war, Lend-Lease Churchills, plus homegrown T-34s um, and the KV-1S, which is really cool. So you've got a lot of uh, uh, choices here as a Soviet player, which is nice. All right, so let's kind of wrap up this uh, look at Fortress Europe. Uh, just I wanted to mention that the quality of the book, I wanted to, to talk about that. It's really nice. Um, it's a nice uh, thick book. Mine is a tad bit warped, but that's my fault. I left it in the uh, car in the direct sunlight when I, I bought it. And um, I live in Arizona. It was like 116 that day. And the minute I opened this book, it was uh, <laughs> it kind of got warped. I, I fixed it, but you can see still a little bit. Um, don't leave your books in uh, the direct sunlight. All right, uh, so um, back to my thoughts. This book, it's a great quality book. The, you know, the way it's laid out is really nice. It's easy to follow. It has you know, over 120 pages of, of information in it. And like I said, it costs $25. Um, one of the things I will never uh, kind of knock Battlefront for is the cost of their... Um, their books, they're, they're not codexes, I guess they call them intelligence briefings or something like that. Um, $25 for a book is, yeah, that's that's a good chunk of change, but when you compare it to some of the other games out there, you know, you're paying $50 for a, a codex in 40K. Um, it's, it's really nice, particularly for what you get. You're getting $25 uh, for this book, and you get four fully playable factions and you get lists that are totally usable. And like I said, yes, they are vanilla, but this is an interim product. Um, as they kind of roll out late war for uh, D-Day, the Americans, the British, the Germans are gonna get their books. But what about that Soviet player, the guy that, that really wants to play Soviets? Well, this is gonna keep them going for a uh, half year or a year, or however long it takes before Battlefront sh shifts back to late war uh, Eastern Front. So this is a, a good interim, and even now, like right now as I'm filming this, the only D-Day book out is the American one. So if I'm a German player, I can still build lists out of here. If I'm a British player, I can still build lists out of here. Uh, so it's a great interim product. Once all of those books are out, am I going to use this book anymore? Probably not. But um, $25 for a, a product that I will be using for a while um, isn't too bad. And, Particularly if I'm later in the cycle, I'm a Soviet player, um, this is going to be very valuable, probably for a, a good long while. So Fortress Europe, I, I like it, um, and that comes from a, a Flames of War player for many, many years, over many versions. It's not my favorite um, as far as, as the history goes, because again, it's kind of vanilla. Um, nothing in here is hasn't been put in a dozen other Battlefront uh, late war products. But overall, it's, it's pretty solid. So there you go, guys. Fortress Europe, late war forces. Should you get it or not, my final thought. Um, if you are interested at all in late war and uh, you have any faction other than the Americans, um, sure, I think it's a great product for you. If you play strictly Americans, you might wait for the D-Day American book to come out, um, which is going to cover pretty much almost everything you have here. Um, maybe a few support options are different. Uh, but it, it's cool and it's good to have in the collection. Um, if you're anything else, a German, a British, or Russian player, um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good product and it's a good holdover. As long as you know it's not the end-all, be-all, uh, detailed kind of campaign uh, book that you might be used to from Flames of War. It's more of a compilation. What I like to think of this is like... Um, you know, when 40K first came out with their 8th edition, they did those um, indexes so everyone could play at the beginning of the the, uh, the edition. 
And uh, those books were somewhat inexpensive for 40K. And this is kind of the same, same thought. It gives everyone the ability to play Late War, even if their specific codex or intelligence briefing um, isn't out yet. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this look at Fortress Europe. If you did, please let me know down in the comments below. What do you guys think of Fortress Europe? What do you think of the direction of late war so far for uh, Flames of War? Please check us out on Facebook at All Miniatures Great and Small. Uh, we appreciate uh, that, and you can keep up with us there. Uh, we try to post what we're up to, um, upcoming content, things like that. Also, we'd, uh, we'd really appreciate a like and subscribe here on the channel. That helps us uh, do what we do. Thank you very much for watching, and keep on wargaming.